Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hail and welcome everyone back to the Random Heathen uh, Ramblings podcast and uh, another week down for us. Um, hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode with Heron Oshi over at the, the Weirding Way, Mythmaker Productions, all that fun stuff. Really awesome guy. Had a great time on that episode. Uh, on that episode got another guest lined up today um an old friend he's been on this podcast a couple of times uh well he's been let's see if he's been on the podcast more than once but he's definitely been featured uh on on midgard musings more than once he's been on the podcast at least one time and uh he used to pop in for like random live streams and stuff on the on the youtube channel and he's got a really uh neat outlook on things he's uh he, he he practices a bit of like occult type beliefs but he uh it's it's heavily rooted in like enochian keys and enochian magic or whatever so i i always referred to him as my enochian brother uh and he is a brother to me he is although not pagan or heathen he is definitely someone who i would consider kin you know or kith as, a, as an extension of the the kin circle um, and he has been, he's been to every one of my, uh, hosted Yule events that our tribe holds. So he is like a, an honorary, you know, tribal member. He has, he has contributed to said rituals, um, over, over the years. Um, we've spoken many, many a word over the horn as it were, right. We've, uh, we've, we've exchanged a lot of wisdom and weird tied a lot of weird with each other and exchanged, um, the, not the gift of knowledge in that way. So, you know, sometimes I remember uh, some evenings where I would sit with him and he would, uh, we, we would just be talking and then, you know, the hours go by and you uh, lose track of time. <clears throat> so Richard McCune is his name. You've, like I said, been, uh, been uh, introduced to him at least once before if you're uh, following the podcast. And if you're not yet following my podcast, what are you doing? Give that follow button a smash. Give that like button a smash. You know, uh, interact with the, uh, with the platforms, however it is that you capture this this podcast whether you listen to it or watch it on spotify or apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, the youtube channel here um wherever however um i think i'm being distributed on every known platform that i can think of i know i'm on iHeartRadio, pandora um amazon music even <laughs> believe that believe that or not um so yeah you guys um whatever however you are uh capturing the, the podcasts why don't you let me know down in the comments or over in the show notes let me know where you're listening to me from and if you do want to have your voice heard on the random heathen ramblings podcast like i tell you in the intro every day uh, or every time this gets aired you can always call into that hotline the number is always uh, active you can just call 615-671-9832 leave a voicemail um, and if you're just, you know, a little bit shy and you don't want your voice heard, um, or, you know, if you do call and you just want to remain anonymous, you can say, don't say my name and I won't. 
Uh, but if you're more of the, the written uh, word uh, type of person and you'd rather send an email in, you can always do that too. Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. So yeah, yeah. Another long, hot, uh, muggy summer week here in, uh, in, the, in the hot state of Tennessee. And it's pretty much been like that for, for a while now. I don't think we're going to see any reprieve. Um, but yeah. Nothing else really much going on uh, over here on my end. No major things to report on, as it were. There's, uh, you know, the, the Middle Tennessee Heathens meetup, which is happening here in Murfreesboro this Saturday. Be sure to, if you're uh, interested in coming out, check out uh, the Facebook event, which is going to be um, down in the description and show notes of the podcast. It's, it's going to be at the um, McAllister's Deli on Medical Center Parkway in murfreesboro tennessee come by uh starting around noon grab yourself a sandwich bowl of soup salad what have you whatever suits your fancy come out say hi hang out with us for a bit um but yeah let's go ahead and welcome uh richard in. we're going to be lighting our incense soon as he joins us and uh the topic of today's discussion is going to be a story that he has to tell of an experience that he had um of the near death kind he had quite a uh, interesting thing happen to him last year quite a quite a scary thing happened to him last year um pulled through uh, amazingly well he's back to his old self as it were but maybe not quite his old self i think things like uh near-death experiences um can really change a man change a person so yes we will be talking about his uh nde <laughs> Uh, so if that bothers you, and if that's not your thing, then now's your chance to to tune away. But I hope you listen, and I hope you uh, stay, uh, you know, a part of this whole thing because I think I think we have a, a pretty fun uh, episode lined up. Just the way the discussion uh, can go with it. So, uh, without further ado, let's welcome in Richard McCune. All right, now here we are, back again with. Uh, Yes, the dick, the dick, the big dick over here, and then that's, the dick that's, not a, that's not a that's not an attempt to try to um to stroke your ego or anything else for that matter. It's just your no. name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, Richard McCune's back here, um, as you can tell, and uh, yeah, I think we got a pretty pretty neat uh, podcast lined up for us today. While while we get into it, I've got you know the the incense thing here that I'm gonna just fire up but um i was telling everybody before uh richard that your uh you know for those that are like new right that haven't uh seen you before or known you before the other podcasts uh what's your what's your uh what's your deal man like what's your background i just said i said an occultist kind of but anokian and um, yeah like it's hard to really hard to really like i guess come up with a name for it so what would you what would you call it um i'm okay with uh, the enochian thing um because i do practice some enochian magic but mm -hmm. i i personally I, I like to pull from a lot a, a few different things um so um if, if some of my views sound maybe sound a little christian if my views sound a little satanic uh, if my you know it's because i or um or kind of magical, kind of woo-woo, using crystals, yeah. you know. Um, it's because I, I tend to pull and make my own belief system ideas and, and so on you and so forth. you got your hands in all so, kinds of different pots, I guess, right? <laughs> many, many toes and many different waters. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, but I, you know, I've, I've said, uh, I said to, I've said to you and I've said to other people before, you know, like, uh, the religion or the what, how we I guess manifest our spirituality our religious beliefs whatever uh, matters very little when it comes down to like true friendship you know because exactly you know you and I have shared a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas and, and just you know general I think good wisdom you know wholesome ideas and stuff and we've sat and we've had conversations mm -hmm. that have lasted hours without us even yeah realizing that it's taken you know time flies by so yeah 
Um, and we're at a point where uh, you've uh, you've accepted me into your tribe, uh, and we look at each other as as brothers. Right. Um, and um, and and you've said before, and, and I think you've even done podcasts on it, uh, where you, you don't throw that you don't throw that brother right uh, thing or, uh, around to just everybody. You know, no, so. yeah, indeed. I, I I mentioned it a little bit in the the uh, um, kind of like the intro parts of this uh, episode here today is you know all of the events that you like there almost every Yule I think well pretty yeah every every Yule event that yeah. uh, we've hosted here like you've been a part of and you've you know you've been a part of those uh, rituals and then other rituals too you know where we've um, Mm-hmm. you know beyond brotherhood like you you're like that honorary tribal yeah. member you know always welcome around the the hearth fire and, and to participate in our our things because of the contributions you know the exchange of that gift of wisdom gift of knowledge the gift of experience you know all the things that you can't really like pick up and hold as a gifted item but nonetheless they they are gifts i feel yeah you know exactly so yeah you're absolutely yeah. brother to me man and uh yeah i appreciate we, it yeah we uh we had a we had a wild thing happen to you um not too yeah. long ago a little almost a year ago now believe it or not how fast that right. time flew by yeah. but um i so I, I gave the people a little bit of a a hint other except that uh or to the extent that i said you know he had an experience of the near death variety yeah so i kind of gave people that warning it's like hey if stuff like this you know triggers you or or makes you uncomfortable like turn away now because this is it's going to be one of those podcasts right we're going to be talking about stuff like that um but uh i i have really nothing else to lead up to to introduce it so i guess why don't you just kind of start from the beginning and go however wherever wherever it goes man however yeah far down Uh, the rabbit hole you want to go um, I'll just tell the whole thing, um, front to back, um, and side to side. yeah, front <laughs> back, side to side. I it, it, so my wife and I took a small vacation to Wilmington, North Carolina, um, around November, um, to you know. We did because we love the beach. We love the beach, even no matter what time of the year. Uh, it's the the water, the the the, the ocean, the the sounds. Uh, it's just it's very comforting. Uh, so we would we go there. We have a good time. We have some friends hang out, and then we like to take a stop by the beach and just kind of sit there and just listen to, listen to the water. It's very it's very soothing and relaxing. And um, well, one of our trips there, uh, we went out with some friends and I ate and drank and uh, we got there Friday. And then uh, the next day I started feeling like a little bit uncomfortable, uh, like uh, like a, the feeling you get when you have an upset stomach, you know, um, like you might get a little bit of food poisoning, like a little sick to your stomach. And um, my later on that night, that Saturday night, I was feeling like butt. And uh, my wife decided and her friend decided to go and have dinner and everything. Well, I sat at home and watched hallmark movies on the tv that i didn't know how to change the channel to oh, so man. i'm stuck you, there had, to be, you watching, had to been really sick so. if you were watching hallmark movies yeah yeah <laughs> that's and, uh, I, this is it i i, I may i i'm here this is it this is what i'm man i can't believe you survived such a, a near-death experience of watching hallmark movies man <laughs> yeah, yeah i think it was like three to five hours that's what it felt oh, like man. But I was feeling so bad, like it could have been just two hours, but um, 
anyway, it was just bad enough. And so <laughs> my wife, bless her heart, she she loves homework movies, especially around my Christmas too. time. Oh, my uh, too. So, yeah. Uh, Lifetime original movies and the Hallmark Channel, man. It's like, <laughs> it's the same regurgitated storylines every year, but she loves them. And, you know, hey, whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, so I'm sitting there watching and my stomach's churning and feeling awful and everything. And then uh, Sunday we decided to leave and um, we came back and then, uh, and then I was feeling the same way for, you know, a few days and just getting progressively, slowly getting progressively worse. Fast forward to Friday, I'm, my stomach is bloated look like I'm nine months pregnant and I'm throwing up and I'm like, this is bad. So we're like, let's go to the, uh, uh, those urgent care type places, you know, and, you know, and maybe they can kind of do a CT scan or we get there. They wouldn't do a CT scan. They took blood work, but it, it nothing came up suspicious to where, uh, they were like, Oh, you have to go to the ER. Uh, but then again, here I am, um, look, looking like I'm nine months pregnant. Um, I didn't have any pain, um, associated like you would have with rupturing your appendix. So I didn't have any pain on your right side or anything like that. Um, uh, but, uh, I had a little bit of pain, like in the middle, but it wasn't like, bent over in pain kind of a feeling it was just more like a discomfort and so the doctor comes in looks at me feels around and you know well he's, he is definitely bloated but i think he just needs to fart it out that's ex his exact words were i think you just need to sit on your husband and he'll just fart it out Wow. And hey, man, I could have done that, man. And uh, I don't have a doctorate <laughs> degree. I don't even I have a, I don't even have an associate's degree. I could have told you that. Yeah, I just sit on him and fart it out. <laughs> right. Damn. Like that was advice from from a, from a physician. You know, didn't even say I should go to the the, the ER or anything. Um, so we were left very suspicious. Like eh, we don't buy that. And. Yeah. Um, so she took me to one of those hydration places because I was sweating. I was kind of um, in and out and, you know, maybe like hydrating would help me a little bit. And um, so we went there and one of the nurses on staff was like, he doesn't look good. I think he needs to go to the hospital. And shortly after that, we, we went to the, the ER and um, they take me back to a CT scan in the middle of the CT scan. I'm like vomiting and everything and vomiting, like on the way back, it was getting progressively worse. And the, the sur surgeon came in and was like, well, we're going to perform emergency surgery. We think there might be a, like a blockage or something like that. Uh, yeah. Needless to say, they opened me up and they noticed I was septic and, so they lifelighted me to Vanderbilt Hospital, which is, if anyone in Nashville, that's like the best hospital, the best oh, yeah. care. Yeah. And, now, wait, now, so you, they, 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 you went back for the scan, you're vomiting on the way back to the, to, to get scanned. Mm -hmm. um, they, did they get the results of your scan to determine we need to cut you open? Or was that just like a, we think we know yeah. what's going on. It's best for yeah. us to just skip they, that part. Like, yeah, it was very, it was very evident that um, he's there's really something going on. They took a good look at the CT scan. They they noticed like a lot of bowel type stuff going on. So um, they cut me open, and then when they cut me open, they realized that. Um, I was septic, so they, I guess they washed me out, and then they lifelighted me to Vanderbilt. I guess that's a part of this. From what I remember, I, I, I the only thing I remember out of this is uh, yeah, I mean you weren't conscious. I, I, I was <laughs> unconscious. the 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 last conscious thought uh, I could hear was the um, 
uh, was the uh, the helicopter blades going, and then I passed out again. And then a week later, I woke up, and um, everything was explained to me. When I've gone through, uh, my appendix had ruptured. Um, the reason why you didn't feel anything or have any pain associated was because your appendix was not where it would normally be for for somebody. Um, they mm-hmm. said it was actually in the middle and cushioned behind something. So I didn't have any pain or anything. Uh, so that they. So I, I would not have known. And the only reason I was even concerned was because why am I feel like I'm going to pass out at any moment? And, and my body, I was in shock. I was in septic shock. So my body yeah. was shutting down. And yeah. those feelings coupled with being looking like I was nine months pregnant. Yeah, like I said, it was right. all that, all that bowel. I, I was full, you know, I was full septic. They, um, they had to do three surgeries apparently um, to uh, to repair everything. One of the surgeries involved being a, what they call a bowel resection, which means uh, I, I lost 19 inches of uh, intestine. Um, which so, which intestine? The long, the longer, the long, inte- the large intestine, the long intestine. Yeah, that one, Jesse. <laughs> that, that 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 one. <laughs> you ever pay attention and, and you know science class you watch a bit watch bill night so the large it's all intestine? it's all your int- i don't know uh okay maybe uh this we had i don't know that part um but uh they just took about a foot and a half away that's all you know <laughs> yeah almost two feet and yeah. um so uh you know i had a big open wound and everything and um it wasn't a staple everything shut kind of a procedure yeah um they had to put you on a a thing called a wound vac and the this wound vac is what starts closing everything up they stuff you with a bunch of foam and and then they turn on the machine and it sucks it everything in and then um then there's a a thing that flew, flew, fluid to flow through, so you can. You said, you said uh, they they stuffed you with foam. Yeah, like, they be like a uh, filling the scar, like, like a build a bear. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, they stuffed you with foam. Just shove it up your ass and then just you know shake yeah, it around they, a little bit. Fill it off. <laughs> I watched them. I watched them do it. Like uh, the first time they did oh, it, yeah. I was I was high as high as hell <laughs> on the uh, on Dilaudid, and um, oh that'll do it. And, and then they had to, they were cutting foam and everything and just kind of st- stuffing me in like a little teddy bear. And, and then there, and then they had this cord that they attached to the machine and apparently it, it helps fluid drainage and stuff like that. And just gross and everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they were like, okay, Richard, uh, we're going to turn it on. And I was like, okay. And before I could finish saying okay, they turned it on, and it, and and you you feel like your soul was coming out of your body, oh, and wow. and it, it was very painful, and that that was three times a week, um, while I was in the hospital, and then by the time I left the hospital, um, near close to Christmas, um, so. All in all, I was in the hospital from November 19th until uh, December, like a week or so before Christmas, mm-hmm. something like that. So Damn near a month. Yeah. Right out a month or so. Because I, I opted to do uh, physical therapy and stuff like that. I lost a bunch of weight. Mm-hmm. When I went in, I was around 2.30. Um, when I came out of the hospital, when I woke up, I was around 188 and um it's about and I think right when now. I and uh, when I left the hospital I was around 190 or so um and I was on this wound back until February of this year um until about the end of February 
And so I was on the wound vac thing for about three months. Damn. Yeah. And, um, and the going to the physical therapy, they would, I, they would change my wound vac there. I had to, um, get, learn to get my balance right, you know, and, um, sure. uh, get some muscles working again. And, um, I couldn't do any ab or anything. I couldn't do anything to gauge your abs because the scar is literally running from just below my sternum to um, just about the groin area. Mm -hmm. So it's like all the way down your, your belly and everything. And, and you, ba you basically were like, you got dissected in a way. Just yeah. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Dissected. Pretty much. Um, so, damn, that's scary enough i mean yeah. and, you know I'm, I'm like reliving this whole experience just from hearing you talk about it because um i i vividly remember obviously where where i was when uh when your wife uh let us know because we were in north carolina too yeah um at the time and so you know <clears throat> i think you guys yeah. were out there the week before we were and so like we had uh we my wife and i had gone out to visit friends and family in, in north carolina and then I get yeah. this message saying that, uh, you know, you're in the hospital, um, you were septic, and there's an emergency uh, appendicitis, you know, they're, they're removing your appendix. And I was like, holy shit, you know, and yeah. just kind of listening and following along with the progress of stuff. It was like, this was bad. Like, it, yeah. was, it was, it was bad. And, and, you know, knowing what the outcome could have been. You know, I was like freaking out, man. I'm like, here I am in North Carolina. I'm like, am I going to have to, you know, and not, not to get visceral, but I'm like, am I going to have to, am I going to come home and, and bury my friend, you know, like bury my brother? Like, that's kind of the shit that I was thinking about. I'm like, no fucking way. Like, no, that ain't happening, man. He's got to pull through this, you know? And uh, so, yeah, like reliving this, the emotions of it all right now for me is. Yeah, it was, it was, it was nuts. <laughs> it was. And um not to not to downplay. I mean, you're the you're the one no. who went through it. So like, but it, it's a uh, it's really interesting. Um, and this is where I get, I guess, into the near death, uh, yeah, experience type type of things. Um, you know, it's surprising. Um, you would think that some people would be traumatized in some sort of way coming out of it being in the hospital that long and being in that in, in the hospital bed for over two weeks and uh a, a week of your life is gone um yeah literally part of you yeah. has gone away i mean that you know yeah. almost two feet of your intestine you lost 45 pounds <laughs> yeah. 50 pounds i mean just like crazy changes of your physical body right yeah um the hardest part of the whole experience um, was uh, I was on a lot of drugs. Um, I was on fentanyl, propofol, Michael Jackson mixture, basically, and all sorts of other stuff, being feeding tube, um, um, What's that big uh, two they put? Um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's like a, not a, it's like a two that goes all the, the way down your throat to, and, and um, you know, they got to pull it out once they, <laughs> once you're healed enough. Yeah. And, you know, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no, there's no, like, there's no talking while, I mean, things like literally just shoved down your gullet pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I was um, tied to the, I was restrained um, during that two weeks in ICU um, because I had an open wound. They didn't want my hands going near. They didn't want to take that risk at all. I don't blame them. So I was restrained. And, and I remember like, getting the nurse's attention so you can't speak um so they, there's a suction to help suction out you know stuff in the belly like like bile and fluid and stuff like that you know 
uh, well, I couldn't, I had trouble finding it a lot. And so I had to get their attention and try to get them to get the thing to, to suck everything out. And so I would, uh, this is going to be gross. I would intentionally make myself throw up. Uh, mm-hmm. So they would come over and do what needed to be done. You know, um, wow. it, it, it sounds awful. It's the worst ever. Um, uh, but then uh, coming off of those drugs um, was rough. Uh, I remember the first couple days I was awake and a little bit more cognizant. Uh, sleeping was very hard. Um, I um, was having these weird dreams. Or I, I remember telling you the, about this. Um, um, like, you know, um, I, I'm asleep in, in that feeling of that sinking feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like where you're losing ground in a way and you're kind of like falling but or slipping. And I was having dreams of being going down like a like a dirt tunnel. Um, and I kept seeing different symbols, some symbols I recognized, some I, I didn't so much, some uh, symbols I, I recognized were from my real, my face that I've come across, and some symbols that came across from, from yours, um, uh, especially, uh, I definitely remember seeing Freya, Freya's symbol, um, I definitely remember seeing, uh, I think, um, Odin, um, and, but I also saw, I, I, I follow Astroth in, in, mm-hmm. in my, in my faith and I saw his symbol. Um, so, and so all these different things, that sinking feeling and, that feeling that if I let myself go to sleep, that I'll just keep falling, that I'll just keep going and never come back up. So I would force myself awake. And I don't know if it's the result of the drugs yeah. um, and being messed up that I had these dreams, but these dreams were very real real to me and um this, and and, this is all while you're in the in the uh icu or or, or recovering yeah. from the cert like this is all during that yeah time. yeah um this was after that first week um so i guess um you know that first week uh, i was completely out so i was awake and cognizant and the, the first couple of days after being awake, o- awake and and a little bit more cognizant, every time the, the the whole the rest of the week was rough to to sleep. Like, um, but the first couple of first couple of days, maybe first three days, were like the worst because it was coming off of those really hard drugs and everything yeah. that I was on and all, and having those dreams. There were the same dream, like I swear, like two days in a row, and um, then after that was just um, um, after that was just you know I hate hospitals, so like I I would probably sleep you know a, a few hours and then wake up. It was kind of normal for a little while at that point. Uh, yeah. But I wasn't having those dreams anymore. But it was that first couple days um, after uh, recovering um, that uh, I was having all that, all those dreams I was just telling you about. Um, yeah. And I Good remember question. telling you. Hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll save it till later. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I remember um, those 
telling you those those dreams and everything when it occurred and he said it matched up when it uh when you were visiting um your friend jm yeah in north yeah. carolina and yeah now that was like the timing of things were so uh i don't know in, it, like very interesting the way things lined up right because right before we went to north carolina i went on my shamanic journey <clears throat> with dingo and patrick and we did our you know ritual uh, out there in, in around our bay and, and it was a it was an all-night shamanic experience and then you know literally less than a week later i'm in north carolina and finding out about your situation and that's the weekend that i was at jm's you know mm -hmm. where we held a little ritual of our own you know where there was you know uh time spent around the fire there was drumming there was it was it was again very a very spiritual and very ritualistic experience coming off of the coattails of an intense mind-altering you know uh, altered state of consciousness experience that i had the week before so i'm literally like reeling from the after effects of that experience and still not quite back to my normal self you know what i mean like yeah I was I was still really not all here, like mm -hmm. there were still I, I was still very new to like this human experience after having gone through something so so uh, so yeah. jarring, you know. And then again to find out about all that, and I was like, I don't, you know, I think in a way that that experience going on that journey and then being in North Carolina with JN and stuff, I think everything included uh, helped me to. Kind of process what was going on with you in a holistic way knowing and mm -hmm. understanding the severity of it but not like losing my absolute mind thinking about the the consequence or what could ultimately happen here like what are we facing right it was almost like i get it i understand it but i'm at I'm, i was like and it's weird to say because again i wasn't the one mm -hmm. experiencing it, but i was like at peace with it in a way you know like yeah he's gonna be okay it's gonna be rough but but having that Moment, having that time and that experience really helped me to connect to the big bigger picture uh i don't know relativity of, of, of life and in our place in this universe and where we land and where we fall and just how mm -hmm. kind of just it is what it is right like you know yeah whatever it's whatever's to be is going to be but I'll, I'm, I'm prepared for it either way but i don't know like just thinking back about that moment and having the memories of how i was feeling still thinking about like man you know this could happen like this is a possibility glad it didn't of course but yeah. you know and i was wondering like when you were talking about <clears throat> the the dreams and the the feelings of falling or slipping into this chasm or this tunnel or this you know uh, how you described right. it as like this this dirt almost like a mine shaft i'm thinking of and like in ways that to describe it like this just earth ridden and and the dream uh to to clarify a little bit more um the 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 stream i was having it wasn't just a one thing and then it was over um i would go back to sleep and then it would start up again it was continuous yeah. same thing for the entire night i would keep waking up and i would be like okay i'm here I, I, i'm breathing all right then i'd fall drift off fall back to sleep it would start up get this feeling and then I would force myself awake. It was like this for two days. So I was wondering, like, did when you would come back, right? When you when you said you kind of like would force yourself back awake, was it was it an abrupt reentry into the room and the space around you, or was or, or was it as much of a I'm going down this hole and now I'm coming back up this hole to get back to my conscious self? Was there? It, a, it was. It was immediate. It was abrupt. It was very abrupt. Yeah and it but that feeling of going up the tunnel was that quick as well so it's just mm -hmm. that whole just coming back up yeah huh. so do you think that the because i know from uh you know no, ndes you know near-death experiences they're, they're they're very widely documented everybody has different recollections of what they would refer to as a an nde and and I know that this podcast is to talk about that. Do you do you do you think that 
the dreams after the initial results of like, you know, the, dis the stomach distension, the vomiting, being in mm -hmm. surgery and then not remembering anything until you walk back up. Do you think that what you were experiencing was this drifting of your conscious self into death? Like, do you think that that's what those dreams were or those visions or, or whatever you want to call them? Do you think that that would be what, what you would refer to as a near death experience that it was like your body almost being like, it's time to go. And, and you're like, no, I'm not going to go. <laughs> that's, that's what it, that's what it, it really felt like to me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to, or anything, but like, it really, it really felt like that to me. Um, people are going to be like, Oh, I don't care what people think. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna let my old man, yeah, kind of come out here for a minute, but like I don't really care what pe people who believe in it or don't believe in it. Um, I don't care what they think because um, they wouldn't. It's one of those things you just wouldn't know unless you're going through it yourself. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna just be matter of fact about that um yeah um you know so it was very uh you know um i felt like i was leaving this place my energy was going about going somewhere else and i could feel it and i, I was not ready for it um uh i didn't like it it wasn't, I just wasn't my time. And yeah. uh, so um, that's the really my thoughts on it. Um, I, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, after I've recovered and everything, I Googled <laughs> and don't ever do this. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous like, rabbit um, holes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I Googled like what sepsis, the survival rate, um, it was under 50%, like 30% of people who get sepsis live to tell about it. And um, so, and uh, maybe the reason why I survived is because I wasn't, I wasn't older or anything because some of those statistics were for people who, um, who are a little who are older yeah. and let it go they usually don't make it um you know maybe age played into it um i don't know um but um i just knew it was not my time and and um not i got a lot of things i needed that i wanted to accomplish and um yeah um you know, I'd just been married at that point for about six months. Um, right. So yeah, man, what a hell of a way to, <laughs> you know, what a hell of a start <laughs> to your first year of marriage, man. You go ahead yeah. and, get, and you rupture your appendix, man. Look, yeah, if, she don't stick with you, if she don't stick with you for the rest of your life after going through that with you, then man, she ate. And something's wrong, man, because <laughs> uh, kudos exactly. to her for, for, for being so strong and being there with her. I, you know, I love Charlie to death and she's yeah. she's she's good for you, man. And, and she's she's been the, uh, an awesome uh, component to, to the life of Richard, you know, and, and yeah. now your lives together. Like, yeah, what thank a woman, you, man. Like what a what a what an incredible story. And, you know, you talk about like, <clears throat> you know, your physical age and whatnot being a factor no doubt mm -hmm. right that you yeah. being a um a middle-aged somewhat healthy mm -hmm. right guy yeah. whatever you're like yeah you, you're not decrepit you know you you know you, uh. you're well put together you had a healthy youth are you active and you're swimming and, and all that other kind of stuff yeah. i also wonder if um because of the visions that you had and all that and the experiences and having some sort of at least to some degrees a subconscious understanding of what that was right you maybe mm -hmm. maybe didn't have it like all mapped out or, or whatever in the moment but at least having some sort of again subconscious realization of what it was because of your 
spirituality and your history and the practices that you've had over years because this Enochian thing right this isn't just like you woke up the other day and thought yeah this is what I want to be like this has been a part of your life for a while at least right yeah do you think that the like do you think that your not just your physical health but your spiritual health contributed to your survival and and not succumbing to that transition into the other yeah yeah um it's possible. Um, I mean, because I just think of it as like, why else would you think that I'm not ready for that yet? I have other things I need to do, and I'm not gonna slip into if this. I, um, oh. If I hadn't, if I hadn't seen the symbols I was seeing when I, when I was having this experience, um, I probably would have wrote it off as something just a weird dream. Um, you know, the effects of the drugs and, uh, but because i'm f- familiar with these symbols um i i knew that there was other things at, at play here um yeah. so um you know i firmly believe it you know uh, i mean like i yeah. think i think that with the combination of your path and and then just having the experiences that we've had together and and like you know the talks that we've had the the conversations that we've held over many a horn of meat and and other libations and i was just that whole camaraderie the whole experience right it's almost like you know there was there was parts of all of that that Mm -hmm. whether you know it or not or whether you think about it or not almost in a way prepares you for something like this right mm-hmm. whether it's you know you know the the, the death or, or the or the illness of a loved one or whether it's your own uh mortality taking hold and and, and facing things like those are the foundations i think in the, in the building blocks for preparing oneself to deal with it right the mm-hmm. the, the unseen the unknown the the the, the thing beyond what we know is our mortal experience and, and, and what we see and, and hear and taste and touch and all that just um, those, you know basic senses the other reason why i i feel th- other things were at play um were the the timing of when you were there and doing your experience with uh with jm and also um i have another friend who uh i think i've talked about it on uh before uh, about uh, my Enochian magic a little bit. Um, I had a person who served as sort of a medium for me in the beginning um, that would help me, that would she would channel uh, was so, or served as sort of a conduit. Um, so the so the so they could speak through her and and everything and that takes a lot of energy and a lot of toll on someone um that that same person uh reached out while i was gone as well so there were there was you and then there was uh my friend um and um and of course everybody else that were in their thoughts all that stuff played into it um a lot of energies being put out there man in in this you know the universe you want to call it the spirit realm like there was a lot of yeah and like i've said before um i've said this before many times what you put out in the universe the universe will return in kind um that that is so true here um so yeah it's it's uh i don't know man like my and you know a lot of my own uh, growth and spe- in, in in my spirituality, that where I've grown and what I've become, has has found its place in uh, not so much like the unseen, well, not so much like the unseen in terms of like the gods, right, or or what you might consider like the divine or sacred beings. It's found mm-hmm. its place in the things that are seen, like the earth and the and and nature and things and realizing that there are spirits all around us they take form 
they take form of, you know, a heron or an eagle or or the rocks and the trees and the water and the, you know, the trails and the nature and stuff like there, there there's literally a multitude of sentient beings like we are, but just in different form existing all around us and tapping into those, you know, tunnel, like, like tapping into those uh, places and, and connecting, reconnecting back to those places has opened up such a, uh, a window for me and in, in realizing just where I, where I am in this big universe, as you say, the things that you put out, you get back. It's, it, it is, it, it doesn't make it so like it's vast and there's this void that like kind of blows your mind. We you think just the, 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 the size of it all and, and us mm-hmm. in comparison as pe- as beings, but at the same time, it's also like, but I am a part of this and I am able to influence this and this, and I can mm-hmm. manipulate things and make things happen because I've done it and I've seen it and it's happened. And so, you know, I don't know, man, it's like, a, it's such a, mm-hmm. a wild thing to, to know that you're not just, you're not nobody here. We're not nobody. So yeah. we, we are, we are powerful beings, you know? Yeah. We, and we have the ability to do some really powerful shit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and being a part of that in, in different ways, you know? Uh, exactly. Especially when it comes to like the mortality aspect of things, you know, like suffering loss, um, but seeing the life that still continues to exist despite that loss, right? I mean, there, there, there are more times than I can count on my hand um, that my wife's brother, who, who we, you know, his, his, the anniversary of his passing was just last week, mm-hmm. you know, his physical body isn't present, but he's still around. Like there, if I, I, I can't count, I can count on, more times than I, that I care to think about on how many times I, he's made himself manifest. You know, he has a daughter, our niece, that's a form of life that's tied to him, you know? So it's like just being aware of the, the, the cycles, you know? Um, yeah. Seeing you rebound, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about, man, because <laughs> like you were saying, like an event like that could, could, could severely, and, and I'm sure has, you know, uh, traumatized people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, that's understandable, you know, to go through such a, a traumatic event of nearly dying and, and, and having part of your body literally ripped out of you and all this other kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, and, and, and here you are, man, like playing rock shows on stage <laughs> and, and, and living your best life. Right. Yeah. After surviving such a thing. I mean, that's a, that's iconic, man. It's legendary. Uh, and thank I mean that, like, thank you. It, it, <laughs> I look at that on shit like, damn, like, what a, what a, what a, what an example to set, you know, like, not it, it's something, go ahead. It's, yes, like, um, not- it's very uh, interesting um, that the amount of um, people who responded, because uh, I got to see all those messages, um, and people who followed um, on social media who cared, um, and something like something like this, you know, you learn who your friends are. Um, uh, I'm not going to say anything negative uh, about it, um, but you learn who your friends are, and you know who's close to you, um, and so this has given me a different perspective on uh, friendship and you know who to let in who not to let in Mm. um there's you know being in the music scene um being uh, a a musician you know there's people I, i i held on a on a pedestal you know for most for most of most of this life you know and i don't have as much people i put on a pedestal anymore because i honestly do not need that and in my life you know um 
because those people I, I've put on a pedestal for most of my life didn't bother to reach out. And, um, and so, it, you know, it grounded me. And the things in perspective, right? Mm hmm. And, um, and because of you learn who your friends are, um, it led me back into a band that I was not no longer involved in. Um, I had moved on, I had stepped away from it. Uh, I thought my time in the music scene was pretty much over. Um, then my appendix thing happened. And um, when those people, guys in the band reached out and everything and showed support, um, that changed my perspective. You know, those people I was putting on a pedestal that didn't care, then the ones that I left thought I didn't care, uh, d still cared, um, spoke volumes to me. And, then, and when they reached out to me like, hey, man, do you want to come jam? that was a that was a fucking no-brainer in my yeah. opinion like yeah whatever happened was in the past you know let's do it and now rattle trap got to play our first show as a band at, at exit m and right. checked off a bucket list item for me and um and it's so amazing um to sort of have this um come back if you will yeah um, a rebirth in a way you know and i'm not just saying just from from, from, a, from a music perspective but a, a life perspective like um i um uh, i i'm more into my faith as i thought um i'm not necessarily doesn't necessarily mean reading books or um or dancing around naked in a camp campfire <laughs> <laughs> um though though that well, I, is I've, fun. I've run out i've run out of books to read so you know i gotta do something no i'm just kidding gotta do something <laughs> um, <laughs> that's uh, around naked around the campfire is not as not you know don't 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 knock it till you try it kind of thing don't knock it till you try it yeah <laughs> um so you know i i'm more in tune with with my beliefs in my 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 faith yeah and my um being that i've ever have um i'm a little bit more driven um i, I still like to be lazy because I, I like to be lazy as fuck and don't <laughs> get me wrong but um but i'm very driven when i am involved in things and um um uh, as a as a musician uh, i'm cranking out the guitar riffs left and right so uh well like uh, i say you know the, the there, there's so much of your like you say you know the, the near-death experience like your life is your life and and part of your life is music you're a musician and i and i don't know yeah. too many people who are legitimate musicians who um would not would say that music is not a part of their life in oh some it's form definitely uh Right. It's always been a part of my life, you know, um, whether I, it's sitting in the background or at the forefront. Um, yeah. uh, right now, it's it's at the forefront, you know. Yeah. Um, but you kind and, of went um, through those, those that that kind of like you went through that like roller coaster of uh, of experiences, right? And the thing that kind of launched the rattle trap to to be what it is. Mm -hmm. you could almost look at it in a way it was like your near death was the near death that needed the thing to die and be reborn into what it is now if you want to, yeah. i mean that's how i look at things anyway that's how i see it it was like there was a there was a time that part of you was dying mm -hmm. and whatever part of you that was connected to the band and in any sort of way and then what needed to die did and now look what has happened because of it like there was this yeah. resurgence this uh, this revitalized approach to and um, you guys play exit in man like that's nuts that's that's yeah great. and also um the my everything that i did in the past um 
is in the past now. And um, I don't mind talking about it. I used to get very nervous to talk about it. I used to be a, afraid of judgment or, or um, how people would feel about me because of my past. Um, I don't really give a shit about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's in the past is in the past. And uh, yeah. what I'm doing now is most important. I have a beautiful, lovely wife who um, takes very good care of me. And I take very good care of her. I'm surrounded by some of the best friends possible. I have a wonderful brother as you. And um, I, I'm, I'm full. Um, mm. It's overflowing. Um, so yeah, that's um, encouraging, man. That's that, that's inspiring. You know, that's that's inspirational. Oh. And um, I live your life to the fullest. Um, you, you, you know, and if you run into a bump on a road, take advantage of it. You know, and um, you know, don't look at the downside. Don't get depressed. I'm not traumatic because of this experience. I'm uh, reborn because of this experience. Mm. Yeah, man. I uh, I think a lot of people that listen and watch this podcast will. I think that I think this whole uh, episode, this this story that you shared with the world, uh, will resonate to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, everybody has a story, and how that story gets told and when that story gets shared is up to the person. Uh, and and it, it's all, it all ties into, I think, how we uh, write our stories, how we tell our sagas. You know, I've, like, I've almost in, in almost every episode, or at least in multiple mm-hmm. ways, I've said that, you know, and it's not just me. I mean, I, I didn't coin this phrase. It's, it's come from a bunch of different sources, but we live in saga times. And the sagas that are being written now may not be that of a great king who led an army against, you know, oppositions or, or, or great heroes that slew monsters or all these sorts of things that were in the old sagas or some of these old tales and in, 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 in folklore. But they are nonetheless great tales. You know, the yeah. story of, you know, the story of, of, of Richard who came back from, from death and, and, and saw ancient symbols in a, in a in a great tunnel uh, where he was traveling through in, into darkness and he came back into consciousness, into life and, and went on to become a great skull among the people and, and, and sang and performed great songs in front of an audience and, and performed on stages, you know, like stuff like that, man, that's, that is the stuff mm-hmm. of the sagas. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you could, you could <laughs> position it in that way. And, and it'd be, you know, kids would be just like, tell me the, tell me the one about, you know, Richard, the gutless, whatever you know <laughs> the, the man who lost his head he lived two feet of his intestine like tell me that story again right but uh i don't yeah. know man it, it, it's like stuff like that that is is inspirational and it's uh, it's it's stuff that i think people can take their own experiences however big or small and be like wow this guy who i don't necessarily know very well uh told this amazing tale of endurance and of rebirth and of you know, meeting the the challenges, the the, the, the frightening reality of, of possibilities of, of death and, and all that, and then turned it around to become something to fuel his life, mm-hmm. right? I think that's pretty epic. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I really I, do. I may be 43 years old, but um, I'm... Uh, not, a, I'm not a day over 90, then. No. Don't look at day over 90. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you must use be just for men because you have way less gray hair than I do. Um, <laughs> I I tell you what. Um, <laughs> in my last job, uh, someone actually asked me that, and I gave a real sick and disgusting answer. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know if it's safe for this podcast, but you're probably um, you're, you have a, you have a healthy diet. Uh, well, I mean, uh, you can also use a lot of lotion. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it was yeah, yeah. like five times a day, five times a day. That's so, it. So, got to bump up mo- the that, numbers, right? That's a, that's that's, that, that's a modest amount for for a man of forty three. You know, there's I'm only so many good. hours, and there's only so many hours in a day when you're not, you know, shopping for life insurance 
and um, take, <laughs> taking power naps. <laughs> Take, right. take a power power nap and get up and get going again. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to take that. You got You got You got to pull off to the side of the road every twenty minutes for a bathroom break. You know, <laughs> as Bob Ross used to say, whenever he pound his paintbrush to uh, to the easel, uh, he would say, "Just got to bang it out, bang it out, <laughs> gotta bang it out, man." If, hey, if Bob Ross said it, man, then that that those are words to live by, baby. That that's a mantra that I'll get behind. You know. I'm gonna, yeah. shoot my, I'm gonna shoot my happy little accidents all over the place and just bang it out. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, Hell yeah. Oh, dude. Well, that's that's great, man. I I'm, I'm I'm so glad that we got a chance to you know because I've talked with you obviously about this since then and and we've had our own little one on one or or group conversations about the whole thing, but uh. I, I, I want to thank you very much for for being willing to talk about this and revisit it and and be candid enough to yeah. basically just a wide audience of people to tell yeah, the story and, abroad and, and and share that with with people. I think I think it's going to resonate with a lot of folks. I really do. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I used to be very timid about talking about personal things about religion and things like that. And um, I'm not scared to talk about it at all anymore. Um, I uh, don't care uh, how people see me uh, when I talk about those things. Uh, I used to, um, but, you know, you only live once. <laughs> For sure. And I, uh, I, uh, I, I mentioned this too, uh, before you came on here that, you know, you're no stranger to the podcast. Of course, you know, we've been friends now for a long time and, and our brother. So, um, yeah. for, for, for people that are wanting to know a little bit more about Richard and his background in the description and in the show notes, uh, I'm going to link the, the last podcast episode that you were on here with me. And I'm also going to link the very first video that you, uh, came onto the channel, the YouTube channel. We sat okay. in this very space. We had this backdrop behind us. We, we talked about things. It was almost like a little interview sort of thing. That's going to be uh, linked and annotated and all that here. And so for people that want to know a little bit more about, you know, Richard and our history, um, to, as, as much as it's revealed in those in that content, definitely check out the description, check out the show notes and bring yourselves up to speed because yeah, yeah. Um, from 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 where you and I first met each other, like the, the channels and all that, where we first met each other, uh, and to where we are now, uh, uh, like couldn't have called it. Like I would never have thought that this is where we would be in right. our friendship when we first met. You know, it was, it was the music, and that's the crazy thing. Like so many of my yeah. my friends and and people who have become brothers to me, it, it all started with the music scene. That, mm -hmm. that was that that was the common ground that was the thing that started a acquaintance relationship yeah. which blossomed into friendship which then grew into not everybody by no means not not everybody but the ones that have become brother and, and family to me it's where it started yeah that that, that, that music scene that music circle and, and, and the, the ability to i don't know weave words through song and and, and tell tales um yeah, and it's powerful, um, it's powerful magic, my man. Like it really is. You think about yeah. it. Yeah, it is. And um, casting spells through sound, like it's wild. So, you know, if anyone who's interested, um, um, feel free uh, to go check out my new band, um, Rattle Trap, uh, with two P's. Um, you can we'll find annotate that down there too. Yeah. Put it on. You guys have got you got some shows coming some up too, don't you? Oh yeah, we got a bunch coming up. We got uh, August sixth. We're playing at uh, Bring It Back Games in Shelbyville, and then Shovel. Uh, you you playing, playing in the shovel? Mm -hmm. Shovel, as they say. If, you, if you're from if you're from there, you just drop all <laughs> the letters and you just, just shovel. Shovel. <laughs> and uh, then August. Um, no, I'm sorry. September 10th, we got another. We have another show. It's going to be our EP released uh, party. Uh, it's going to be in Franklin at uh, the Whiskey Room, 
and um and then we got some other shows coming up after that in september and, and october um so if you want to follow follow us um the click year. on the link and like our page and like our stuff and yes all that all that good yeah. stuff yeah, and there, I know there's a lot of people that uh, that listen and watch to to this stuff that are in the respective Middle Tennessee areas, right? So you guys, if you want to meet this man in person, shake his hand, buy him a a water or a beer. You still drink, don't you? Right? You still yeah, drink I still drink. Beer. Oh, I still drink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Buy this man a beer, man. For hell's for yeah. fuck's sake, man, he almost died. Buy him a yeah. beer, right? Buy me a Not beer. <laughs> So yeah, all this yeah, stuff's going to be, uh, you know, annotated and stuff in the description show notes area. You guys check it out. Um, Rattle Trap, um, the videos that and, and podcast episodes that uh, Richard's been on uh, with me here. And uh, yeah, I think that just about wraps it up. Is there any, anything else that you wanted to add before we uh, tie this one off? You can hang out uh, afterwards. I'll, I'll wrap right. you for a bit after um, the podcast, but anything else? Um, that's it. Else? You know, um, uh, we're all in, we're, we all live together we're all under the same world same roof uh so every, everybody just needs to respect each other and love each other um that's the best way to be and uh remember as always everything that i've always said everything you put out in the universe you'll get in response whether in good karma or bad karma um that is a tenant that i always live by um i highly suggest you live by it too yeah man you get what you get yeah, you know? yeah. absolutely isn't that well, a song you. uh you get, <laughs> you get what you get <laughs> you can't always get what you want what you, yeah no wait that's yeah. a, no that's a different one that's a different song that's the wrong song but, but if you yeah, try sure, sometime sure. <laughs> yeah. get what you need <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah. you get appendicitis and then <laughs> you come back and you know tear shit up on stage at exit in and that's the, that's the actual lyrics to the song too by the way I know yeah I yeah wrote, i wrote them tore with, it up uh, and exit in <laughs> i wrote those lyrics with uh with john lennon and the boys from uh from from the rolling stones you know yeah john lennon you know those guys and, they wore and, like and make, hawaiian t-shirts and they and they played surf rock you know those guys and uh mick yeager mick yeager yeah <laughs> Yeah. 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 They 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 named a uh they named a, after the a, drink. A they named the submarine <laughs> after him, I think. Yeah. Maybe. I think they named a liquor after that. Could that be liquor. right? Or liquor. Damn near killed her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pets and and, and non-binary folks of all ages and, and shapes and sizes and whatever. Um it's been real been real fun thank you richard for being my guest and my friend and my brother as always here uh always. so for everybody that's uh you know tuning in and watching check the description for all the stuff that we already talked about and until the next episode may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time <laughs>